are you doing? So I'm stood at the moment within our church conversion project. I've come up here on a Saturday just because, uh, well, no one's here. It's a bit noisy <laughs> during the week. Uh, so what are we doing? This is a grade two listed conservation area. Uh, we're converting it into six apartments. They'll be used for serviced accommodation, Airbnb type things, contractors, holiday makers. Uh, it's a bit of a collaboration between a few of the services we offer at the Rocket Group. Uh, so we've got the heritage obviously taken care of, the construction team are on site, and uh, architecture obviously taking care of the design details. So it's a, it's a good little scheme between us all. So I'll give you a little view, a little look around, show you what we're up to, any sort of um, funky things we're going to be doing during the build. And yeah, hope you enjoy. Cheers. So the guys have just started constructing the party wall behind me. Uh, so there's quite a lot going into this, uh, the poor... The poor devils, um, yeah, so we've, we've basically gone with a robust detail. So these are tried and tested methods of construction uh, that means you meet sound, um, in, with sound um, uh, separation qualities, fire properties. Uh, so yeah, you, you kind of detail these up and uh, jobs are good and really. So these are dense concrete blocks, so nine kilonewton uh, blocks laid flat on top of each other. They'll have two layers of soundboard either side and that ticks all the boxes for uh, party walls basically. Dense concrete blocks that form in the party walls and the structural walls and each of them is probably about 20, 25 kilos each. So you think Paul Graham and Ty, the labourers, Dan, Mike, everyone's putting a shift in. Uh, but yeah, that's got to be built up to the underside of the new second floor that's going in. So. Yeah, that's a hell of a lot of work to do. These ones aren't so bad. These are lightweight thermalite blocks, and you know they probably weigh five kilos each, so that you can throw them around. Just one other little bit while I've spotted it. So this is a wall starter system. So obviously we can't, well, we could, I suppose, but we, it is a stone wall. We can't really break in to tie this new wall into that. So what you do is you bolt these uh, silver strips back to the wall. I'll try and get in a bit more. And then these little brackets, little angles, they go into the mortar joints at, I think, every three or four courses. And then that basically ties this new wall into the existing one. And that there, that's your, your damp-proof membrane, for those who don't know. Uh, so that's just to stop any moisture basically breaking through from here into this side. The roof. I don't know how much detail you can pick up from, uh, from down here. It's, it's not really, I was expecting maybe some really nice, um, you know, ornate trusses up there, but I don't know if you can see, let's see if I can zoom in enough. I mean, there they are, just some king post trusses or queen posts, very, very plain, to be honest. This was a Methodist church. So what we're going to do with this one is actually take the whole roof off and replace it with a manufactured roof uh, by a company called Moduloft who we'll be using more and more regularly. So the beauty of the Moduloft system is it's all manufactured in a factory um, off-site. Uh, th this one's in Brompton, uh, brompton upon swale so not too far from Barnard Castle where we are today. Uh, and because it's all made in a factory, uh, they basically come to site and put the roof on in one day. So the, the benefit, I think, of this one is, well, A, our guys aren't having to work on the roof, so there's obviously a, a removal of some of the working at heights uh, or the dangers in, in construction. Uh, but we can actually keep the lid on this project and obviously get up to that stage uh, during winter. So we've, we've got a, a watertight box to work within. It just enables us to, to keep going while the weather's quite poor, which it has been this last week. week. Probably going to be using Modulof quite a bit with our other schemes as well. So we've got a barn conversion they're looking at for us. Uh, they're also allowing um, other trades to come in and actually install their... Um, their kits whilst it's in the factory. So we're going to have um, iHelios installing infrared heating to, uh, well, to, to all the building, but they're going to go to the factory and, uh, and install their elements to the top floor within the factory as well, factory conditions. So when it comes to site, we've got, it, it's, a, it's a fully plastered finish. So we've just got our guys to go in and do the second fix on the uh, electrics, the plumbing, and then just the finishes on top of that. So yeah, what we've actually done with these guys as well is ask them to uh, to basically remove our uh, well to remove another risk area, which is the trusses. So they've got a crane coming to to lift this um, lift these roof pieces into position in, in say in one day is crazy. Um, but they're also going to spend you know a couple of hours beforehand lifting these trusses down, 
I don't know if you could see them before, but there is some big junky timbers. So I'm going to cause, or we're going to be causing a lot of disruption to Barnard Castle. It's a bit tight around here. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a day of disruption coming up. So I'll, uh, I'll let you know just in case you're using the roads around here. Windows. Now, I say it's grade two listed, conservation area. Uh, planners and well, conservation officers aren't very forward thinking, let's say, with allowing you to use different materials on these. So we, we have got planning permission to basically refurbish these and then add secondary glazing to the window reveals. Now, I mean, these, I don't know if you can pick that up, but these are big windows. They're quite high as well. So they're going to become pretty redundant if we, well, if the guests, I suppose, have to basically winch up one window to then winch up another window. So it'd be great if we'll uh, be allowed to actually replace them with maybe slim glazed, double glazed units. Obviously we're paying the bills in this one, so anything we can do to lower our running costs longer term, it's all gonna be electric this one as well, so there's no gas, uh, which unfortunately at the moment is the electric's the most expensive form of energy. So yeah, anything we can do um, to, to lower our running costs is, is, a, is a godsend really. Stained glass windows. So these, uh, we're going to actually reapply for planning permission for these and actually the, uh, the larger sort of timber windows just to see if we can get them replaced. I mean, they're lovely things as they are. They do need a little bit of repair. Um, but why not try and get something else? Uh, we're going to try and get our own designs onto the stained glass uh, and do something quite funky, really. I mean, they are, they do run between two levels. So there's a bit of a fire break issue anyway. So by by reapplying for planning permission to, to alter them, we can sort the, the, the sound transmission, the fire transmission issues out at the same time. Just come outside quickly. So this is a bit of a challenge as well. So this area here is basically all of our outside space that we have. Uh, so you can see already um, the challenges with just waste collection and removal. It's, uh, it's quite a big floor area inside. We're about 100 square meters per floor. Uh, but that very quickly gets eaten up by the time you've had blocks delivered and things like that. So just, I mean, in terms of deliveries and things like that, you can see how tight. This is the main front door one. That's kind of the main road behind, uh, which still is it's pretty tight. So getting wagons down here for collections and things like that is, is proving a bit of a challenge. So these, these are some of the areas you need to look at when you're assessing sites, um, just logistics. Of, of getting things in and out really parking for the lads you know we're paying probably you know 10 pound a day in parking uh, i've already collared i've been collared for a few parking fines where i've uh, just forgotten to do it while i've been rushing to meetings so yeah these things stack up i'll just try and give a little walk through of what we're doing here so this area here there's the front doors come in here that's where the new staircase is going to go you can see there used to be a staircase there previously but then it went over this side um, it's been chopped and changed that much this church that uh, yeah there, there wasn't much history left I mean you can see there there's a little previous doorway through to the attached cottage where the vicar must, is, must have used to live so as we come in here the two or well, the pillar there that's that's going to have an original pillar on so we, we were constrained by having to work around the positions of uh, the pillars that were holding up the u-shaped balcony in this one uh, unfortunately we've had to take them down just because they were unsafe to leave in position uh, while we were working but we've marked where they're going again so we can put them back in their original positions but basically you've got a door in here to the left hand unit that would be a two bed unit and this side door in there and that's a one bed unit so just taking you around the one bedder so you're coming in the door here that wall there is the wall between the bathroom and open plan living kitchen diner so we'll have probably about, what, just under two meters across there. And then where this other window starts, this is going to be a bedroom. And there's obviously the party wall to the stairwell. Again, blocks laid flat, nine kilonewtons, big dense block works. The guys are putting in a real shift in getting these in. We're gonna have about 4,000 of these to lay. So walking through the door here, and this is open plan living kitchen diner. Nice space, actually. Obviously, you're going to have this window providing light at high level. And then moving around, another window here. Let's say there's the wall. You can see the soil pipe coming out there. That's the wall to the bathroom. Uh, so there'll be a kitchen going across that wall as well. 
dining room in this corner. Stood, stood at the back wall here just so you can have a sense of this scale. Right, so walking into the two bed unit, so front door there, you can just see it being kind of created. Corridor here, um, there's going to be kind of like a central service cupboards each side of this, so that's going to, you see the soil pipe there, that's going up a couple of stories, uh, basically taking all of the, the drainage from each of the flats. Everything's kind of stacked just to make running services easier as well. So as I say, coming into this, we've got, um, so that's going to be a one bed at the front here. I mean, you can just about see the yellow line on the floor there. So it's, I mean, it is a small bedroom, I won't lie, uh, but it's, it's more than big enough to put a set of bunk beds in. And then we've got obviously bedroom two here. This is a, a double bedroom. We're going to have the ensuite against this wall, and obviously it makes sense to put the kind of the family bathroom in this area. And again, similar to the flat over that side, nice big open plan living kitchen diner. And I think one of the selling points of these ground floor units is, as I've mentioned there, I mean that's the that's the floor area, I'm um, sorry, the, the first floor zone. So you're going to have 3.9, 4 metres high ceilings on this one. It's going to have a, a certainly a sense of space when you walk into any these. Any challenges so far on this one? Well, I mean, the build itself has been relatively simple. We've not uncovered anything untoward. Um, the, the slab itself has been replaced at some point, so we've got a good uh, base to actually build upon. So we don't need to, to basically re-pour the concrete floor, which was fantastic. I think obviously getting your ducks in a row is always one to consider uh, so just you know we've done a program of works you know showing timelines and that kind of thing but it's kind of zooming out and just thinking ahead for ordering things uh, there are some massive lead times on certain items at the moment uh, things like windows um, so yeah making sure that we get those um, ordered in the correct sequence the module off system uh, I mean it's fantastic but there's a three to four month lead in time on that uh, once we've paid the deposit so again just sort of timeline that in we, we know we need to get the wall up we need to get the floors in we need to get the roof stripped uh, we need to order the scaffold to go wrap around the building so there's, there's a lot to get in um, in sequence really so we've, we've had an issue with this one with the utilities in that the electric um, that's already here was registered to the wrong address so just getting that sorted out is, is taking a week or two for the stem to then apply to bring separate supplies in. Um, water, we've, we've got six flats going in here, six supplies. So it's just thinking ahead and trying to give as much detail as you can as early on as possible so everybody knows what they're doing. We've had the concrete poured over this last week so we've, we've had to ensure that everything is in the right plot, in the right space, sorry. Uh, to enable us to crack on as quickly and efficiently as possible.